I mean, <laughs> maybe a little bit delirious, Faith, but I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> well, we are going to be going to Full Sky Foundry for game two between LFM and Heroes Hearth Esports. LFM had the choice they choose first pick, and it's Heroes Hearth who chooses our newest battleground in the HGC pool, at least. Yeah, Full Sky had definitely, ever since we saw the changes at the earlier part of the year, because when this map started, it was a very late game map. I and mean, you could go back to week number one, Arthlon on Asmodan, and then it's like, wait a minute, Asmodan scaling and everything of that nature, he was fully stacked and still couldn't take down those late game catapults. Uh, very different map since then, a lot more sustain, a lot more fighting. But now we've seen some more changes to the battleground, most notably because the Fort Tower experience has been distributed elsewhere between the fort and the keep and i think that's very different because normally we'd see the simple rotation you get the first protector a couple walls all of a sudden you're there and then it's 13 to 11 13 to 12 by the time the second control point but now this game looks entirely different this is much more competitive and the comeback potential is very much real now heroes hearth themselves lost the first protector to team freedom and ended up being able to fight just fine on even talent tiers at that second control point and that's where they gained control of this game and that's why when I talk about how good Heroes Hearth looked last, last week, it was not just that they maintained that synergy while playing with Talking Trees and not having Arthel on there, but also because they had a fantastic understanding of Team Freedom's compositions, of their own compositions, and where the spikes happened so that they could fight in theory over those future ones because they had that super strong, sustainable Diablo, Tassadar, and I think Tracer 2 composition. Yeah, it, when this map did get that minor rework in the earlier part to the Protector, when the Protector got buffed, that was the main change. I talked to Ishbu that very same week, and he was telling me a little bit about scrims. Obviously, I didn't want to bring too much out into mm -hmm. the light, but he was telling me, he's like, yeah, he's like, now it's just all about winning the first team fight. Like, he, him and his team identified that super early. And so it's just like, it's just about winning the first team fight, and that's it. And so that's why he's like, that's why the drafts look so different. That's why everything looks different. You're not seeing the Asmo anymore because I asked him about the Asmo Dan. He's like, it's not. So now, what is the new win condition? What, is, what can you identify now? Heroes Hearth was very early on in that when we saw the protector changes. But now with the map changes in general, we'll see what their next step is. A lot of Tracer Genji bands in Europe. We had Abba their last map, Abba their Dahaka, the globals, but a, uh, a common trend to see for Towers of Doom here. A lot more focus toward the norm of Tracer and Genji, which does leave Dahaka up for LFM if they want to have that hero, but also swabs as Yurel. It leaves Yurel up, and I think this is the map where she can really shine. Holding a point, that's pretty good. Level four, you get to level four. Here, you want 35 armor, let me jump to you, uh, or jump in with you, uh, if that's the case. So. Definitely makes a very tanky front. That's five seconds of armor, by the way. And which it's a six-second cooldown. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, so we'll see how much impact that has in the early game skirmish. Oh, Enough so that it is going to be first pick URL. I think Jaina and Phoenix are considered. We saw Johanna Blaze rotation last time. I think that could be here for Heroes Hearth, but there's a lot more they can pick from. But a Jaina Phoenix for Heroes Hearth in particular, when I see them take away the Genji, I think that says that one or both of those still might be in play in the early part. What is that face? But what about Tychus? He's he's looking at himself in the mirror like, what about me? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the face he's making. Caption this. What happened to my cigar? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm predicting or anticipating still a blaze here. I think Heroes Worth has options tank-wise. They showed a great Diablo game here before and were able to pick it later on. So maybe if they want to get blaze and then have one of those damage dealers be the focus and the emphasis for them, now that we're seeing them be Oh no, they're in the second pick part or uh, position last game, so it could be another. Well, you know that they have respect for that Diablo because they actually banned Diablo in the last game, so in the second ban position. But they still go with the Blaze Johanna, gives them that tanky front line. And again, I think if you're looking to protect something like a Phoenix or a Jaina, and you got to wonder if LFM wants one of those heroes here, then you still have a lot of that capabilities. With Tracer being taken away, Genji being out, those high dive backliners, one thing we all have to consider, especially after watching Simplicity last week. That's Hammer, in case you couldn't tell from our it's weird dances. It's kind of like Tychus, <laughs> but it's Hammer, because it's more yeah. Tychus Odin, I should say. That's true. We but Sergeant see. Hammer is a thing. Mm -hmm. And this Johanna, I think, does well into that can blind. Yeah. Potential condemn, potential fo con potential follow up, or could also protect. But Endemic had Johanna one of those games, and it was not enough. They had 
W build Chromie, and it wasn't enough. Simplicity also banned I Benji, say, too, right? Yeah, and yeah. I will say that part of that was that the double melee of Thrall's Zeratul got destroyed by Divine Storm. Hello. Yeah, but, yeah. But, about that. But about that. something to keep in mind here. Malf and Jaina pick up. You talked about the Diablo ban, and I thought that was interesting because from what we've seen, the two tanks in this match have very different metas. Uh, Ishbu has been sticking to Johanna primarily with a little bit of that Diablo. Super sustainable, though Diablo can give that engagement. Fury's been all about what we saw last game, the Muradin, ETC. We saw a variant from him, even a Stitches. He wants to bring the kills to his team, line them up. And maybe the Diablo would be able to do that for them still, but I'm I'm expecting to see these kind of aggressive tanks to continue for LFM. Yeah, if you've got a blaze on a Johanna and you're thinking, all right, I can deal with an ETC pretty easily. I can probably deal with a Muradin okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is something they can play into. So Phoenix Band, Jaina Band, Sergeant Hammer Band, or Bust, that are a Deckard Band. I'm terrified that Sergeant Hammer is about to come out here and Jaina is going to be forced to go in. The one thing, the one saving grace is you do have Malfurion on your side. So even if you go the poke at level one, generally you go Arcane Intellect at four. But if you can't get those auto attacks on the chill targets, you still have Malf's Innervate. So there is some save. That pairing, that natural pairing of cooldown reduction with the with the mana and stuff of that nature does help quite a bit. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the Urel Sergeant Hammer matchup. Ural has quite a knockback if she can get into position, but I expect that she would take quite a lot of poke trying to get in there unless she's going to Avenging Wrath in. The Avenging Wrath again gives me that 35 armor, so maybe it's just less of a concern overall. They'll stick with the Decker Kane. Maybe a Blizzard's enough to drop down on a sieged up target. But Ural can't go anywhere if there's a Stukov. We saw the Stukov last game. Yeah, and it's not fun to play Ural into. Yeah. Because. Already. Everything's channeled. <laughs> so it does make it difficult. We'll see if that's an option here for Hero's Hearth. No Phoenix, no Tracer, no Genji. Jaina's on the other side. Gul'dan has kind of been the backup. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of what else we generally see Crowan on. Li Ming. Li Ming is a possibility. I, you got to have some type of sustain, I think, if that's going to be the case. Mm -hmm. But when we look at engaging into a Urel and Jaina, is there something that you feel comfortable moving into? Hanzo's still up. Oh, yeah. It's just Hero's Heart doesn't play it anymore. <laughs> They're just like, eh, you know, we're just trying to prove a point. We don't have to. They retired him. It lost one game, and it was like, you're dead to us. <laughs> there we go. In Rhaegar. I, well, the early game sustain for Rhaegar is much, much better. I don't think I can say that enough. The extra healing is significant. The cooldown reduction is there. It doesn't require you to go the same build that you normally go. Healing Totem is still good for the long sustained fights, but an eight second cooldown feels so much better. Kerazine misses it. But the extra healing from Rhaegar, definitely very good in the early game. No hint of Chromie, even though she was all over this map last week. I don't think we're gonna see her for LFM already having Jaina. You know how I feel about Chromie, so. So you're okay with it? I'm okay with it. <laughs> Chromie is to Jaha what Chironda is to Dreadnought, true? Who, to you though, we gotta come full circle. Can't just be, can't just be us. Mm. Who's your hero? Other, you said Fnatic Backdoor Cores. I mean, they're good. They just anger me because I'm like, no, they're going to do it again. How do they keep getting to do this? But well, what's your hero? I know. I got to think about it. Let what? me think about it. You I'll report back after the break. Really you it. should already have that instant, just like, I despise this hero. Oh, yeah, Sylvanas. <laughs> You're laughing way too hard, Gilly. <laughs> It is true, though. I'm sorry. Is it true? I think probably. I don't know. Let me think about it. There's some things like Tychus with Odin when you Odin too late and then you're in the entire fight you're Odining. I'm hearing you, but I ain't listening. Okay, well. Uh, Hero Sarth has a pick to make. They need another damage dealer. We've got the hook into Roots combo. A Grey Mane into a Jaina. Is a little bit scary and a false that in a URL. Stitches, mm -hmm. that's a very good cursed bullet target. Mm -hmm. I know I can see you're doodling a picture of Sylvanas now. Uh, With a giant no oh, sign over. Right after my Brightwing picture. 
Uh, but we took Brightwing last week. I'm sorry, but I'm just saying. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I got a tweet, by the way, that says that Brightwing favors Druids, I believe, and therefore she's part of the Alliance. So your Horde stuff, no go. Let's focus on the draft now that we've got the facts straight. Uh, Stitches, hook into Roots. Uh, definitely really strong. Yurel, very tanky frontline. Very, very beefy. Stitches high as health pull. So Curse Bullet, a little bit appealing. Hanzo, we've seen a lot of Scatter Arrow build ever since the auto attack range nerf and the level seven nerf. We haven't seen that armor shredding at level seven with the redemption at level one. That's right. been a thing of the past since those changes. I don't know if this is an option. It kind of is appealing to me, but I, I think, think so Scatter too. Arrow is probably going to win out here. Yeah, it just depends if they're looking for keeping that the pressure going on Stitches or if they want to have the constant poke and the area damage, which seems to be more of Hero's Hearth Forte when we look at this map in particular. We'll find out as early as level one. I also want to know, is this going to be a Gorge into Mighty Gust type of composition and then just get the kill that way? It is... Uh, pseudo what Heroes Hearth is doing in the last game, just trying to get the blow up on one target. Or if we'll continue to see the putrid bile picks that every once in a while when we get a stitch stitches in phase two has been the choice of heroic. Fury always putting down the Jarash <laughs> Droplets, I'm so proud of you right now. It's customary if you're playing Falstad. <laughs> you go the Buccaneer skin and you just press Y as fast as you can. That was every game in Korea. I, I would hate it two. when they would go <laughs> over to that side of the screen. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. I'm not going to lie. I do it all the time. Yeah, I bet you You do. have to. So Sylvanas player. <laughs> How's Brightwing in the meta? Probably about as good as Sylvanas. You know when it's fight time? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're both sad. All right. We are going to see the heavy slam build this time. Ooh, BBJ took a ride. Was that oh, feral one? Just barely makes it out. Just barely <laughs> indeed. He, uh, he dodged a bullet on that one. We are seeing a change up, by the way, for Jaina, Sergeant Hammer or not, going into that extra range on that poke for the Q. So we'll see if we get Arcane Olympic. Again, Malfurion does kind of alleviate those issues, did not go into the Innervate talent at level one. So we'll likely see Arcane Intellect at level four for Jaina, but possibility for a little bit of Pierce potential. Yeah, that's an interesting one to see, but an understandable one given how long you're fighting over the control points. But like you said, not having Fingers of Frost is sacrifice in your uh, ability to keep control over your mana. So I would expect the Arcane Intellect too, but we'll see once Elephant rounds out to level four. It'll be right around the time that we're starting to get into the uh, control point, too. As both teams pick up their turrets and prepare for the fight. But Heroes Hearth also got a pretty easy uh, heal pulse, too. Yeah, and this is a different priority. I kind of wondered when we'd start to see this evolve and whether it's there. So one of the things that happens, if you pick up your turret camp at the one minute mark, which is when the camp spawns, you have an opportunity to get the first one. And then during the middle of the first control point, it will respawn and you can do it again. The healing pulse generally is going to be there. Heroes Hearth made an opposite rotation. They got the healing pulse and then rotated down for the turret. So they'll be lacking when it comes to that second turret in the middle of that first control point. So we're going to see the, the stylistic difference of that camp priority. And you'll look for LFM to back off and get that. And we'll, we'll keep an eye on that as it goes through and how which one pays off a little bit more than the other. All right, so what we're seeing from Jaina in picking up Pierce, this is now the full Frostbolt build. But what it lets you do is hit behind and have that increased range so you can try to get the frost bolts on someone in the back line and then start to set up to have the slow uh, potentially then make it a better target for a hook if you don't want to hit one of those front liners you know blaze pretty tanky uh didn't go into new habits so won't have his own self unstoppable but of course we know johanna and how easily she can wear hooks I am really curious how this Johanna will sustain in these longer team fights because generally at seven you're going to go cooldown reduction when they're frosted and you hit with your Q and you can that's what allows you to just spam the Qs over and over to get those lances out. So I am not sure how this is going to work. Swabs, he's got a long ride home as Urel. There's going to be the totem for the slow. Nice knockback. That's going to be enough for Swabs to survive. That was pretty righteous. <laughs> Control of the control point as uh, she's going to be brought back into the fight. Blizzard was down, dodge of the hook. 
the healing totem keeping Hero's Hearth fairly healthy here, though with the Righteous Hammer, now McIntyre needs to burn Pyromania just for the armor, just for the sustainability. With that heal pulse, now it's Swabs, who turns around, gets taken down. First blood for Hero's Hearth. Crawling on the Hanzo, of course, making the plays. The healing pulse had value. The turret also went down in the middle of that. Figgy's still holding onto his, and right as I say that, the one at the bottom right did come back, but the control point right now already being channeled up to 99%. We're going to send it to overtime. Turret goes down. LFM's going to try and hold point. Again, the first protector, nowhere near as condemning as it used to be, so we'll see how much effort teams are going to put into this first one. Grayman went up. You're all coming back. Raven wanted to deal with the assault camp, so there wasn't any free structural damage. Seven is here ahead of LFM getting it. Heroes Hearth had it first. Hook's going to pull McIntyre back in range of a lot of the damage. He's still making it out. They've try tried it twice now to get a kill on McIntyre and not successful with it. Now they lose stitches and the control point first protector to Heroes Hearth. That scatter arrow was sick. I think every single arrow hit there and no seven picked up, which means that LFM not only did they suffer one death, but they're also going to lose the Protector. And Gilly, I'm going to readdress it. It looks like that Healing Pulse paid off because I don't think McIntyre makes it out alive without that. So the Healing Pulse tended to win out in that case against the turret. This go round, this is just round number one of what I'm sure will be many. Yeah, get that and having the Healing Totem and the more uh, better early sustain for Rhaegar. And you would question if the sustain was going to be able to be there for the front line. It just barely was. And now, the next control point, it's going to have the bunker with heroic abilities for Blaze. And so that should be a quite a difference too. We're seeing the Stitches build continue to change up, getting amplified healing, which hopefully for him will help out Fury in future fights since he did go down to take a lot of damage and then savor the flavor to increase his Stitches health region. Yeah, one thing I like about this, it's something I saw, it was full tank build from Blue Team Liquid last week, but this is something that actually works really well. What a lot of people can kind of manipulate just a little bit is the fact that Johanna has a stun on her Condemn. It's a very small stun. That's why it's never really truly felt. But you go flea bag at 13, which reduces your cooldowns. And when you go something like this, you can get more of your ease out. It is on a 20 second cooldown. It is a very long cooldown. But getting shorter cooldowns with this paired with flea, ba flea bag, which I assume will be there, does allow you to get more value out of this talent, does allow you to stack this up a bit longer. It's just a matter of team fights, as we're looking at now, Gilly, they're a little bit more hard to come by. You're not necessarily pressing E on people as much. And so you don't stack it nearly as much. So I don't know if it's going to have the same amount of value, but that's the thought process. All right, we're not seeing this be a Stitches off lane here, although he does still have Heavy Slam. And having Jaina and the Boomerang now for Falstad, Wave Third's pretty good for LFM. It's enough that he can just keep with the Heavy Slam and then not feel the need to build more into things like the Putrid Ground. I'm excited. I mean, Fury is one of the oldest or longest running Heroes of the Storm professionals, so I'm excited to see where this build goes from here and what kind of success he can get with it. He's still pretty young. Yeah, that's what I, not <laughs> oldest in age, but he's one of the earliest professional oh, yeah. Heroes of the Storm players. All right. Nice hook. Gorge. There's going to be the Gorge. And they have Mighty Gust, too. The false start isn't here. Dragon Zero. Largely avoided, but does stun out Figgy. So you couldn't get the damage right oh. away. Now the Blessed Shield, Ishmu is just walking out of here. He barrel rolled into position to get that gust you were talking about, but the Blessed Shield bodying the time. There's going to be another hook landing. No roots going down this time. But that Blessed Shield saved him from being gusted because you could see he was timing it, waiting for that iron skin to wear off, but the timing better on the side of Ishbu. Now that is a shorter cooldown, so LFM will get another chance, especially since they only used Gorge there. But it doesn't feel good to have the surprise factor with that combo and it be so shut down by Heroes Hearth, especially after losing game one. Hit the reset button, and this is going to be a moment where LFM does find themselves down about a level. You can see Heroes Hearth coming down, trying to get a little bit more XP, trying to get that race towards 13, trying to put some pressure onto these structures. That camp up at the top right signifies that Hero's Hearth does have a few moments to get some siege damage in. See if we get any type of aggressive gush. You can see Falstad questioning his positioning at the very top of the screen, just under the nameplates there. Instead, going to fall back, try and soak 13 as the next control point, Gilly, 20 seconds away. Well, Fury just walked out. He was <laughs> trying to see if he could get somebody into that belly and start walking it away. And then, in which case, you would like to see droplets be able to separate that person from the pack. But unfortunately for LFM, a lot of these hooks 
haven't been working out quite to the advantage of LFM. They haven't been able to get any kills yet at all, not even with any early game hooks, and then now with the Gorges too. But we'll see if they can change that up here. They are gonna be playing against the 13 of Heroes Hearth. One of the things that I mentioned was getting value out of that level seven talent, Gilly. He's only got one stack so far. Again, the opportunities are so slim. McIntyre getting quite a bit of damage, does have that bunker. We've got reinforcements coming in, though. And a hook is going to be on one of them. Biggie in danger. BBJ's inside of this. Ring of Frost was used. And Sus for Healing keeps McIntyre alive, though BBJ is the focus. They're going to lose aware in the process. That is a two for one, unless Swabs can kill Arthelon right here, right now. But he dives back behind the gate. It is A OK. Two for one for Heroes Hearth. Ooh, hook denied there. I don't think it would have landed anyways, but the turret absorbed that damage. And as you said, two for one in favor of LFM. Johanna already back up on point in the top. And now this begs the question, if you're Heroes Hearth, do you push down that top lane, maybe look to get a keep wall, and then try and do some damage, or do you simply just make the old school rotation, take mid fort since it's already damaged, take bottom lane and bottom fort? There's gonna be some questions here. Heroes Hearth, I think it looks like they're gonna be moving towards the mid fort and then the bottom fort and really try and snowball this towards 16 and see if they can just control the rest of the game. So we see what LFM wants to do, the coordination of the Gorge with Ring of Frost to try to get the burst and the kill. The problem with that last one is Figgy was under so much fire so quickly that the, the panic sort of set in for the team. But that'll ramp up. We know that Jaina, now she has icy veins. Later on, she's gonna have more either armor reduction or the roots to have more of a control over that person who's forged and dropped down. I think the hardest part for this composition is your limited opportunities. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, you can throw out hooks for days, but your opportunities at landing these and the frequency of team fights is so rare. And it makes it so difficult to get value because you're relying a lot on the wombo combo, but there's still the general combo of a hook root into ring or excuse me into a blizzard without the big wombo. But again, those opportunities just they're not there. This might be one though, because you can hook out of a protector when it drops. You have five seconds left. Look at that root on Fury. They're trying to gain control over him so that he can't get into that position for the hook. He went around the long ways and Heroes Hearth all moved down bottom so that opportunity never presented itself to LFM and because of that Heroes Hearth Esports have a two level lead now and more importantly 16 along with that. Yeah LFM again finding the ganks finding the team fights as you can see a full rotation here as Hanzo just a little bit behind it's so difficult there's going to be the hook no gorge available as iron skin's going to be used by Ishbu and no 16 I think LFM's just going to have to concede but the roots go down as well as the stun. There's going to be the Mighty Gust for the disengage. That was a little bit of a scary moment. Still not able to get that Gorge in. Not quite, even though it was a quality target in Crowan. Now McIntyre fires forward, taking down Stitch's Tranquility. A little bit too late to save the life of Stitch's. And with that burst coming in, it would have been very hard anyway. Bunker used. Figgy dies under the pressure, giving Hero's Hearth a second kill. He exploded. He just ceased to exist. Like, he was on my screen one second, and then he was gone again. Uh, I think a scatter arrow and Hanzo right now, the damage, the cursed bullet that's being used. Again, Stitch's highest base health pool in the game, having tremendous value to rip through that health bar. You saw the dragon arrow was kind of, I'm just surprised that Fury and them stuck around. After the initial yes. forge missed, them staying around with that talent deficit, just, it seems like too much to overcome and maybe trying to bite off a little more than he can chew or needs to chew your food a little bit longer. It's getting stuck. This is a really good target. This is Rhaegar. Slow, so phenomenal from uh, McIntyre. Maybe the case of keeping BBJ alive. He makes it out from the sheer body block possibilities of Arthelon even up there too. He's gonna get brought back in with a hook. But these slows from McIntyre, every time that happens, allows for the disengage of whoever is the target of LFM. I don't know if the roots were out of position, maybe a little bit late. I know that's a, something, a combo that teams have struggled with in the past, even top teams. It's a matter of, okay, I need to know precisely where you're gonna let this down. There's still a little bit of a channel time when that first initial root hits, especially it starts from the middle and works your way out. If you don't hit that in the early going, especially Rhaegar, a little bit more movement speed in his wolf form, was able to dodge it. And if he gets rooted there, he's, he's dead. Yeah, and I mean, Ring of Frost also wasn't used there. So this is the coordination that LFM are still working on. Um, they do have a little bit of change up in their shot calling now with it being Figgy and Fury. And 
under the, the pressure that Heroes Hearth has here in this game, as well as trying to execute this comp when things just haven't quite been going well, this is really unfortunate. It seems like they had an idea in mind that they're trying to use bait, but aware ended up being more bait than not. There's going to be the Ring of Frost used as well as the Ice Walk. It buys time, and now the attention is turned as McIntyre comes in. There's going to be kill number one. Going to be eaten, but all for naught. The minute you go down, you pop right out of that belly, and Hero's Heart really just dominating these team fights. Yeah, ever since that top camp fight over the heel pulse, it has felt like LFM has been panicked in these. The synergy not quite on point, staying around maybe longer than they needed to, and that was 14 into 16, where they still had all of their keeps up, and now this is the punishment that comes in when those things don't work out, when you take those risky kind of plays, which they felt like they needed to, and it just doesn't pay off. So now that they have 16, and though there is a control point active, Heroes Hearth are fine to just come on in with this gray main and win the game, taking us up 2-0 in this best of five. Well, hard to execute composition sometimes does struggle, especially against the team of Heroes Hearth. It's like, look, we have tried probably every basic combo, every wombo combo that you could possibly imagine. And so it didn't work out for them at all. And again, I think that that style of composition on Volskaya, just you have to hit it and you have to hit it early. And if you don't have that early lead, you're gonna struggle. And they clearly struggled to find opportunities throughout that entire game. Yeah, especially it felt like the one time that they had the gorge on BBJ and he lived for far longer than the team wanted. Figgy was on the camp on the other side of where things were happening, which is a Jaina probably is not going to amount to where you want to be from that, unless you are willingly flanking with an ice block, but that was earlier on. And then McIntyre too, he got the ancestral healing, so he was a really tanky target there, losing out the one for two. That felt like just enough to send the momentum in the edge of Hero's Hearth in a way that LFM just couldn't quite recover from. The Rhaegar pick paid off. Again, mm -hmm. the early game sustain, I think, definitely is very evident in that game. So I like what I saw from Rhaegar. We've still got a lot of testing to do. I think that overall, I would say it's a buff Ancestral. It's just, is that enough of a nerf on Ancestral to say, hey, it's balanced, or is Rhaegar really strong? I think there's going to be a lot. There were other regions that were playing Rhaegar more towards the end of last season. I think this is going to be an opportunity for maybe Rhaegar to make a comeback. Still to be determined, but a good start nonetheless. Well, we're going to go to a break. LFM has a shot to bring this series back. But if not, Heroes Hearth will take the series. We'll be back with Game 3.